today we have the big theme of faith. And faith is a gift. But it's a gift that also requires participation of the receiver. Because it's about relationship. Faith isn't a thing. Faith is really a relationship. It's a relationship of trust. You give faith to somebody you trust. And that trust can be undermined. Or that trust might require a certain involvement in the other person's reality and then it becomes too costly and one prefers to stay a distance and not to get too involved I think we'll just go up here how about that get close up to those flowers Because relationships unite our lives, they bring us together. And then, if we're together, we have to also carry the weight of the other. And to let the other be the other. Faith doesn't exist on its own. This also implies counting on the other, giving space to the other, it implies love. It's a whole integral relationship. It requires a lot of, of work, of involvement. It's interesting that a slave girl from Israel up in Syria, which is out in this direction, it's not as clear today as it was the day before, yesterday or the day before. But Syria is just across the lake really from here. I'm trying to sort out how far I can walk through here. And she was taken captive. And she's working for a lady whose husband is the head of the Syrian army and has leprosy. It's interesting how enemies politically and may not necessarily be, there can be also relationships, great relationships, personal relationships in those situations. I'm impressed by how that girl wants to go to, to the lady whom she's serving and say, if my master would only go to a prophet in Israel, he could be cured of his leprosy. 
Isn't that, isn't that astonishing? And she was taken prisoner because of a raid here, a war, a battle. And how even in a situation like that, a person can desire good for her captors. There's no alternative for her now. She's a captive and she's living in the reality in which she finds herself and she obviously has a prayer life usually when people are suffering captivity having lost all their own home maybe she has no more family near her and her relationship with god is growing and she wants to bring that goodness that god can do for her captors there's also something very powerful there very beautiful very wholesome A lot of life in that, a lot of, a lot of goodness. I don't think there's any other way to say it really. A lot of goodness. To be able to do good even though you're in situations that are very negative for you and in a more general plane, the day-to-day -day grind wherever you are is to be good. It's to continue growing in faith and trust in God and doing good for everybody. And Jesus will go on to say to, to love those who persecute you, to love your enemies, to do good for those who hate you. And that's a, a tough scenario, eh? But that's a great scenario. In a certain sense, it's easy to live the regular religious life status quo where society is comfy there's no major crisis going on everybody looks like they're you know a nice established society they're doing okay And there could be a lot of corruption there, a lot of selfishness. Sometimes when we go through severe illness, we become more humble. At the end of the day, even our oppressors and captors are human beings. And they have their own miseries and limitations and need help. And this poor guy has leprosy, even though he's the head of the army, to have leprosy. a rough rough situation human beings can be in rough situations and there's compassion for the other even though he's my enemy even though he oppressed my people even though he surely won a big battle against Israel here is this slave girl daughter of Israel <coughs> and she's doing good and then the story goes on and it's very good ending and he, he himself refuses the instructions of the prophet but eventually he gives in and he agrees to do what the prophet said to go bathe seven times in the jordan river there's a lot of pride he didn't want to do that he preferred to to refuse first of all before he acquiesced And then we go to Nazareth and we find the status quo society. Everybody's in synagogue. They're all living the formality, the community, there's social status, social respect. But there's great interior pride 
that can become so arrogant that it rejects a critical call to look at objectivity. And they throw him out of the town, they want to kill him on the side of the cliff. It's a practicing community of religious tradition. They're in the synagogue, they're studying scripture, and yet they can't take an alternative reflection that's self-critical about their own status quo. When does our faith do best in society? Under difficulty or when everything is hunky-dory and going nice and smoothly? When am I doing best in my faith? It's amazing what people have done in times of duress and trial and challenge. Thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? As the hind longs for the running water, so my soul longs for you, O God. Many times in a very established society of status quo situation, we're satisfied with our comfortable zone and we're not thirsting for the living God. To be thirsting for the living God. Send forth your light and your fidelity. They should lead me on and bring me to your holy mountain, to your dwelling place. And I will go to the altar of God, the God of my gladness and joy. Then will I give you thanks upon the harp, O God, my God. A thirst is my, a thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? Send forth your light and your fidelity. They shall lead me on. God bless you today. See you later, alligators.